Now, I, some people would spend a fortune on belonging to a gym, but for those of us who are bibliophiles, we know we, all we need to do is buy a few art books and then shift them around and hold them up on screen, talk to them. A lot of lifting for the arms, you know, it's, it's a free gym. And you have the books at the end of it all. Number one, Pure Style Outside by a certain Jean Cumberbatch. Here, the bit at the back says, Jean Cumberbatch is a pioneer of the new down-to-earth approach to interior design, explained in her best-selling book, Pure Style, which I also have, Pure Style. This is great because it also tells you how to do a Christmas that's quite simple in style. And it also gives you exactly the particular teapot, coffee pot, table, furniture she uses. They tend to be sort of habitat, they tend to be simple in style and it's rather an attractive life that she projects, a sort of London simple style but everything is beautiful in a very moderate like natural um, palette, natural ingredients, a clue of her palette. They're listed here as, I just flew past my eyes there a moment ago, white, creamy yellow, terracotta, green, blue, pink. That's it. Next, Bloomsbury Needlepoint from the tapestries at Charleston Farmhouse. The home of Vanessa Bell, who was sister to um, Virginia Woolf, and she set up house in a farmhouse. 19 teens and 20s and 30s of style. You've got chair seats and you've got developments from actual fabrics that are embroidered there. You've got a rug. Um, you've also got, I say, a blotter case. Some works are too big and complicated. She just shows you a diagram and gives you an indication of how to set about it. But they're wonderful. There's a um, little pencil case. There's a, a frame around a mirror. So if you like the Bloomsbury Group and you're inspired by them, and especially if you're inspired by Virginia Woolf, um, she lived not far away in her house and there was a lot of toing and flowing between them, between the households, and you can stitch something inspired by Phyllis Bell's house. Guise Bend, the architecture of the quilt. And this is one of the largest format books I've got. I mean, it really is awkward to hold, but that's quite appropriate because you're trying to get the whole picture of a quilt in. And Guise Bend is a place in I think it's near Alabama, it's in the deep south of America, where some, quite a few very poor sharecroppers lived. And to keep themselves warm in their uninsulated houses, they made quilts. And they made quilts out of all sorts of material, leftovers from work, stitching fancy quilts for white women, and clothes. And the whole area was called Keys Bend. And then one person chanced by and began to see the beauty of what was hanging around. I think he saw an old one hanging over a wood pile. Pile of wood just to keep it kind of slightly dry and much to the amusement of the owner insisted buying it and then bought others. And they're irregular quilts. They look like modern pieces of abstract art. And this book will show you how the shapes in the quilts go well with the dilapidated surroundings around them but also tell the story of the women in their lives. And they are like the modern pictures, modern paintings, abstracts that were painted and given so much attention by men. And these are the women's work and they are fantastic. And some of the younger women have then been given purpose made cloth they can pick or dye or print on to make quilts and the tradition continues and with those exciting materials they've been able to do some fascinating work like for example I think the quilt on the cover is one of these where women was given more space and time and fabric to make what you want and it's stunning and the book is similarly stunning. Love, love, love that book. Well, this is a slight change of location and there's quite a simple reason for that. 
there was sunshine beaming down on me in the previous room I was in and I was just cooking. You could probably see my face was a fairly vivid shade of tomato or scarlet. Um, so indoors for the final bit of this shelf, which is quite a long shelf because most of the books are quite thin. This next one is an unusual shape. And the reason it's like that is, of course, because it's very, very useful. It's very old, Diamond with Superwoman, written by Shirley Conran, who went on to write lots of salacious kind of novels and things. This is actually based on decades of being involved as a female journalist and writing for a major paper, pulling together ideas for how women could balance home life, career, and everything else that was going on with them. And it's full of classic, simple, no-nonsense ideas. I thoroughly recommend getting, getting one. No matter what state you can get it in, there is more common sense packed into these little pages than uh, in many a book. And she basically said, somebody asked her one time, you know, what do you do with the time you've saved from all these different tips and tricks for cutting back in your household? care and she just looked at them in astonishment and basically said you do as little housework as you possibly can because for some women it becomes their entire life and um, I think that's brilliant it also gives you tips on getting your raising your kids moving house I find very helpful um, time saver starting a business looking after your body and your health a short stress survival course Okay, this is a wannabe book, which doesn't fool anybody. How to Stay to Jumped Forever is a BBC series. It was called Life Laundry. Uh, we had this on UK, pretty good. Um, to be honest, the series and the book are fabulous, but I haven't fully adapted them because actually I don't like a cold-bloodedly clear every single surface kind of way. I'm not a minimalist. But I like looking at pictures of houses that are very clean and tidy. And I like taking up the odd idea of how to tidy things away. Just, just storage, having some good storage that stops chaos. Uh, so she's pretty good at that. Donna Walter is the name. And I actually picked up on her because of pictures of her house in a magazine. But to be honest, she's, a, she's very cut and dried and when you see a TV series of her, it gets to be a wee bit much. The Life Laundry one was where it was a gentleman whose grandmother had died, but who was like a mother to him, and he just could not cope. He stopped looking at his meal, things piled up, and the team came in and helped him, and then helped him have the style of flat he really wanted and liked, and it was a life transformation, so it was wonderful to see. Knitting. Knit one, pearl of prayer, a spirituality of knitting. Might sound a bit strange, but there's a whole book on it. And it's by Peggy Rosenthal. Uh, gives you some small projects, but also why you would knit and how it kind of helps people to focus or not focus and find uh, a particular space for contemplation. Textiles, Keith's Classics, 25 Glorious Knitting Designs by Keith Fassett. These of course have dated like Billio, but they are still beautiful. He always worked with fantastic painters, uh, or painters, photographers, and his designs have changed slightly, but they are some quite classic ones in here. Probably less fussy editions would be what you would do now rather than, than the 1980s with that kind of sense of Baroque and uh, so forth. But his colourways are just stunning, and fabulous and inspirational. Contemporary Needlepoint. It's written by two people with different styles. Uh, let's see, Caroline Robbins and Christine Bootner. And they are inspired greatly by artists and existing crafts across the world and they make all sorts of different things for the home. The only one I've actually done is little sewn 
colourful hangings for the Christmas tree, uh, which were quite funky. But again, inspirational, delightful to look at. In this book, you're going to find a whole variety of different styles, whether you want to embroider a vase of flowers or tulips or seashells, make an apron and do a Hungarian style quilt, lots of tablecloth designs. Um, you like the style of Roman villas, you want to embroider those in cushions or fish or you know, to have chair seats that you make or table places, serviettes, um, rugs clothes embroidery, um, bags, uh, tea, cosy, fabulous. Whether you make the uh, projects or you just uh, love the style, something to see. A book I want to recommend by Trisha Guild is a fantastic interior designer and she has, she runs Designers Guild and this is a book Design in Detail, The Practical Guide to Styling a House. Trisha Guild, now you can see it. Now this is, as far as she's concerned, this is incredibly dated, but I love it. I love it because it's full of confident, colorful style, it, which you don't see nowadays, to be quite honest, in many instances. And she mixes it with confidence. She tells you how to do it. She tells you how to style a room. She has since done other books on about her house where she's, taken what is obviously the same house and she's made it go pale and very different and I I don't get the same feel as I do with these colours. I just think, oh, gorgeous. Just brain. Love her. Sorry. See, I've got lost into her already. It's crazy. This is the danger about these pictures. You can spend time with them and get lost in them. Now, we've already seen Trisha Guild. Her house. This is a book, Trisha Guild on colour, and she's looking through the different palettes, what you can put with what. Decoration, furnishings, display it's called, and of course she's wanting to feature colourways and various fabrics and ideas from her designer's guild shop, which is worth looking at. It's absolutely gorgeous, but to be honest, the price is kind of making you, <coughs> unless you're somebody who is into getting a designer paid to come and uh, do one's house as you know every season as you do it's, it's another world from me um, but I love the ranges of colors because for any color you pick she will show you colorways you never thought of she will show you things you didn't tones you didn't know within that so for example she says blue but the blues she shows are so vast, they're cool, they're vibrant, they're dark, they're turquoise, the Mediterranean blue, she heads into lilac, she's got French blue, which is heading towards uh, a discreet grey navy, she's got um, lavender blue, blue and white together, and then of course once you start bringing in all the patterns and the checks and the stripes and bits of this and bits of that, it's something else. So inspirational. So I hope you've enjoyed this part of my library and that you'll come back and see what the rest of it is like. There will be more art books um, on another shelf over there which is quite sturdy and heavy laden. Um, but I think from here the next step is going to be to the fiction which is mostly comedy and humour. So bye for now. To be continued.